Hey there, everyone. We are back with another part of the Q&A, which I've been neglecting recently. Um, I'm hoping to finish this this year because uh, I don't want to change the name when it becomes 2017. I didn't expect to be doing this into December. Um, but I am almost done. Maybe I'll finish. Maybe I'll finish today. You never know. Um, but right now I'm just waiting for uh, Yakuza 6 to install this right here. So much hype. But uh, we're waiting for that. I'm sure there's a download. There's a patch to download, too. So I've got time to do this video, I think. Um, I don't know how big the patch will be, but I assume it'll be huge. Um, so, yeah, let's get into this so I can try and get most of this done. So let's see. Mike S. Siep. 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 I don't know. Whatever. Um, is asking me some questions. He, uh, he asked, I discovered you via the Angry Video Game Nerd. Do you watch ABGN? I'm interested in how you found me via the angry video game nerd was i a recommended video or did i comment on a video like that's <laughs> it's it's interesting i wonder how that happened um yeah i do watch avgn though i i've i've watched all this stuff i watch all his normal avgn videos i don't watch like the mike's uh i mean like the mike videos or like avgn's friends play shitty games i don't watch those i mean that's i watched and i watched the like uh, halloween uh, monster videos. Those are always fun for me. Um, but generally, I don't, I don't watch all his videos, but if there's like an AVGN video, like an actual re review, I'll watch those. They're usually passably entertaining. Um, let's see. Do you watch Walking Dead? Is Walking Dead big in Japan? Um, I have seen the first episode of Walking Dead, and that's it. And I actually, I own the first season on Blu-ray, and I like watched the first episode, and, it was, and then like it was interesting, and I thought, like, I want to watch more of this, but, like, I realized that uh, it's not fun to watch it if you're not watching it with other people. Like, you can't talk about it. Um, and I watched it with somebody who doesn't really speak English, and it's the kind of thing where, like, it was hard to talk about it afterwards because they didn't understand big chunks. So, I actually, it's on Amazon Video now, and uh, it, that has Japanese subtitles, though. So, I might start watching The Walking Dead. Um, you know, I've avoided spoilers for the most part and only because like I don't know any of the characters so people were spoiling it. I, I totally don't remember. So I can start it now and totally be unspoiled. So I don't know if Walking Dead is big in Japan though. I'm sure it's on some TV channel somewhere but not um, not that I know. I don't I mean I just, I just don't know. I don't watch TV at all. Like my t my TV is not hooked up to an antenna, so like I absolutely I get zero channels on my TV basically. So I just use it as a, like a way to watch Amazon Video and DVDs and play games. That's essentially what my TV is. It's a monitor. Um, let's see. Next question. I loved Resident Evil Six, but I hated Revelations. Could you recommend any other games with gameplay similar to Resident Evil Six? I never played Resident Evil Six, so I don't actually know what was is it if it's plays like five play five. But, uh, I don't know, like, uh, I didn't actually play 6. Um, I I have a, a, a dark secret about me, is that I like Resident Evil, but I, I suck at those games so hard. And, like, Resident Evil 5 was the first game in the series that I beat, despite playing every single game in the series. Like, I'm just terrible at those. I get, I get far into them, and then I'm always at the end, and I run out of uh, stuff. And, like, I just suck at the aiming, and I'm, like, terrible at playing those games. And I guess I could get better, but it's the kind of thing where, like, once I get through the game the first time and I get to the end and I can't win because I don't have shit, I feel like I don't want to play through this again. So, like, I usually just get to the end and then I'm just like, well, I guess I can't do this, so I'm done. Um, that always happens to me in Resident Evil. And I haven't played 6, but I'm excited for 7. I'm going to get 7 when it comes out. Um, a friend of mine recently got a PSVR, and I haven't tried it yet, but uh, it'll be cool to uh, have 7 and go over there and play it with that. Um, so next question, what do you think of the Wyatt family? Wyatt family is awesome. I love the Wyatt family. It's too bad that they use them so shittily, I guess. Like, recently it's gotten better, though, with the Wyatt family. So, like, with Randy Orton joining, I hope they... Like, I came up with this idea for recently on the wrestling podcast about, um, the, how they could make the Wyatt family cool would be to, like, make make it like an NWO angle, except it's it's an insidious cult, I mean, it's already supposed to be a cult, right? So, like, basically what you do is you have other people in the show, like, secretly be members of the Wyatt family. So, like, every once in a while, like, you'll have people 
joining the Wyatt family out of nowhere. And it'll be like they've all they've been part of the secret cult the whole time. And, you know, like they're on SmackDown. You could have Daniel Bryan, who has a history of actually being in the Wyatt family, to like secretly join the Wyatt family and start doing things behind the scenes, like in the story. I mean, obviously, but like they could do that. It would be so it would be really interesting. But I don't think they're uh, going to put that much effort into Bray Wyatt, which just sucks because that's a really good uh, I idea for a character. And the Wyatt family is cool. So let's see. Does WWE come to Japan? Yes, WWE comes to Japan every once in a while, like once or twice a year. Um, they were re NXT was recently here, but in Osaka, not in Tokyo. Um, last time they had that Beast in the East thing. That, I think that was this year with Brock Lesnar. That was early this year. Um, and that was in Japan, but it's the tickets for WWE shows are really expensive in Japan, like stupid expensive. And I thought like, man, I could, if I paid, like I could pay, you know, the same amount for one good seat at a WWE show. I could get four good seats at a new Japan show. And I feel like, man, I'd rather go to, you know, I'd rather go to four new Japan shows than go to one WWE show. So I, I, it's really unlikely that I'm going to go to any WWE shows unless someone buys me a ticket. Um, let's see. What was the first computer you owned? The first computer I owned was a VIC-20. Um, it didn't, you know, it's, if anybody knows what a VIC-20 is, it's like the Commodore computer before the C64 and probably before a couple other things too. But the VIC-20 was ancient and it was old when I got it. Like it was like a hand-me-down computer when I was a kid to my to me because like I had learned a small bit of programming on the VIC-20 in like these kinds of like gifted students classes that I was in in, in elementary school so I could actually use the VIC-20 um, and this is in like 1985 or so like not uh, really you know there's not much you could do but I had a book to teach programming for the VIC-20 and I could program a couple of games on there because like there was line by line instructions it was just copying the instructions to make a game but I did that on the VIC-20 that was like basically all I used it for um uh, let's see can you talk more about your grandfather's service in the Pacific was he ever in Japan um I don't know a ton about it like he didn't really talk about it that much but I don't know if he was ever in Japan he he was definitely in the uh, Pacific battles, though. He wasn't in Europe. He was in the Pacific on a boat uh, nicknamed the Grey Ghost. And I don't know if I mentioned this before, if that's why you're asking that. But, like, he, uh, you know, I don't... I think it's the actually the USS Enterprise is the ship he was on. Because uh, it was a uh, reported sunk three separate times. But they always came back. So that's why they got the nickname the Grey Ghost. Um... And, um, he was, I believe, a gunner on that ship, so he was shooting down planes. Um, that was his, his role. I don't even, I didn't, he never really talked about it that much, and he's dead now, so it's kind of like, you can't, I can't ask him, but, like, I know he had pictures, he had some pictures, um, of him with people, but he never showed me anything about being in Japan, so I'm not sure if he ever was. Might not have been. But uh, that would have been interesting. <laughs> I mean, it would be interesting to, uh, if he were still alive, to see uh, what he thought about uh, me now in Japan. Since, you know, he was spent, like, a bunch of his time in World War II shooting at Japanese people. Um, let's see. Let's see, next question. Do you have any funny anecdotes that you can share relating to experiences of being with or around... Oh, wait, I scrolled, ah, I scrolled past the question. It's probably with or around native Japanese speakers who perhaps wrongly assume that you could not understand the language. Okay, um, I don't have any really funny ones because, you know, I t <laughs> it's hard for me to hide that I understand. Um... um but a lot of people just assume I don't understand. And, um, you know, you'll get... I'll, I've had... Most of the situations I've been in like that are just situations where, like, you know, you'll you'll spend these times in, with people and they'll be, like, desperately trying to come up with English words to uh, make these broken sentences to explain things to you. And they just started that way. They never spoke Japanese at you. So, like... 
anytime someone does that, I just stay in English mode until they uh, ask if I can speak Japanese or if they ask me something in Japanese. Like, I don't know. It seems like the right thing to do to me. Um, you know, if someone pr approaches you in English, you speak to them in English, right? Um, so maybe they have, you know, maybe there's some motivation where they want to speak in English. But almost every time that happens, when I start speaking Japanese, people are like incredibly relieved. But I don't have any situations where people, um, okay, I, I do have, I have situations where I experienced some crazy racism. If that's a, um, it's not a, exactly a funny experience, but like there were, I went to a restaurant once in, um, maybe it was Kyoto. It was either Kyoto or Nara. And, uh, I went to this restaurant with, um, my girlfriend at the time and we sat down at this table and we're next to this couple like this youngish Japanese couple maybe in their 20s or so and the girl starts freaking out she's like I we gotta move seats we have to move and like um, the guy's like why what's the matter and she's like I I don't want to hear English during my when I'm eating lunch or eating dinner actually it was dinner and like the boyfriend's like what are you talking about why we have to move because of that he was like didn't understand he was like totally like what are you talking about and she was like no we can't i can't sit next next to these people and like you know obviously she's just saying this stuff right next to us and like i mean obviously thinking that we're not we don't understand and my girlfriend was japanese but she um she's she at the time like she was like um you know, she was like lived abroad for a bunch of years, so she didn't. She doesn't like look traditionally Japanese, even though she's traditionally Japanese. But like, people often, you know, mistake her for a uh, Japanese who is not Jap like living in Japan. Japanese, like an American Japanese, Japanese American, I guess. And uh, you know, there was that, and they like she and her boyfriend was like mortified when we start. Like, I started speaking Japanese, like. Then they they moved, I think. They moved, but, like, uh, man, we, <laughs> that was funny because, like, uh, it was, you know, I apologized for existing when they left. And the boyfriend was, his face was, like, fucking mortified. It was great. Um, and he, 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 he probably felt like an asshole. And uh, I hope the girl did, too, because she was an asshole. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's probably the most, uh, most interesting, uh, story I have about that kind of thing. Shit, I just scrolled all the way back to the top. Um, let's see. Let's see. Have, next question, have you heard or played the Seaside Simulation Hillsea Lido on the Amiga? If not, it's definitely worth tracking down. I've never heard of that. Um... Sounds good, though. I mean, you had me at simulation. <laughs> what kind of seaside simulation, though? Is it um, is it like a seaside resort simulation, or is it like a boardwalk simulation where you're like, you know, the seaside boardwalk shops and things? You're, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll look it up. Um, let's see. Have you ever played Terranigma on the SNES? If so, what did you think? I've never played Terranigma. Um, you know, I haven't. I haven't played that because I didn't really enjoy the other... I mean, I don't think Terra, Terra Enigma is the one that didn't come out in the U.S., but I didn't really enjoy the games that were before it. I know people love those games, but, like, man, not 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 my type of thing, I guess. Um, let's see. Let's see. Were there any GameCube games that took your fancy or that you found interesting at the time? Um, the GameCube... Actually, in that generation, the, the GameCube was, like, the first console I got. And I got it when the Japanese release for the GameCube came out. Like, a, this is a true how I got my GameCube. I got it really early, before release in the U.S. And my game, the GameCube, for me, was that, like, my friend imported a GameCube. And he attempted to mod it with a Switch, so, like, he could switch between um, regions. And he screwed up the the um the Switch on it. So, like... When he installed it, he dropped solder on the board somewhere and it, like, you know, soldered things that shouldn't have been soldered and, uh, like, it just ruined it. So he was like, yeah, I'll give it to you for, you can have it for, like, uh, 10 bucks. And I was like, I paid 10 bucks for his, uh, his, uh, 
broken GameCube, and what I did was I unsoldered the parts that were soldered, and it started working again. So, like, I just, you know, like, removed the solder drip that he got on there, and it worked fine, and I just soldered the switch back on incorrectly and it uh and then i had like i paid ten dollars for a gamecube pre-release and it, a working gamecube with a switch pre-release so i got the gamecube pretty early and i was excited for the gamecube because you know capcom was like oh we're gonna support this system re4 is coming out it's gonna be only on the gamecube and like um and i was just like i gotta get a gamecube we need that um and, you know and eventually capcom was just like yeah fuck it we're gonna put these on everything but, uh, you know, the, the Capcom thing, Capcom at the time was like my, one of my favorite devs. Um, so they were putting out the, the, the hotness then. So I was thinking like, I gotta get this cause Capcom is going to be putting out all these like exclusive games and like those Capcom games were good. The ones that came out for the GameCube. So any of those were good, even though they came out later, like beautiful Joe and stuff like that came out later on the PS2. Those were definitely worth it. And, um, uh, I'm trying to think of what else was good on the... You know, I really liked... I, I'm Okay, I don't say I really liked it, but Animal Crossing on the GameCube was fun, but mostly I used it as like, hey, I've got all these retro games on my computer. Um, I mean, on my GameCube. That was that was basically how I used um, Animal Crossing. Like, once I collected all the retro games that I could collect, I was like pretty much done. I was just like, okay, I'm done with this game. Now I can just use it to play retro games. Um... So that was it for, and you know, of course, like uh, now, now the name is escaping me. The that horror game with the insanity effects, um, fucking hell, the name is. You guys know what it is. You guys know what it is. Once I started saying it, that game is awesome. Um, trying to think of what else I had on the GameCube. It's hard. Oh, Cubivore, another one that's really awesome on the GameCube. Love that game. Totally underrated. Um, so that's all I can think of for the GameCube, though. I didn't play it, play a ton on the GameCube because, oh, I mean, the GameCube came out and I had it, and then like I was like studied abroad in Japan for a year, and I didn't have the GameCube for the whole year. So like, I bought some stuff when I was here, but you know, I bought like a Zelda, which I wasn't a fan of. Again, but <laughs> whatever. Um, let's see. Next question. If you were given $77.83 million, what were the first three things that you would purchase? Um, that's hard to say. You know, like, I don't have a huge kind of, uh, thing where I have a bunch of, I don't have a bunch of stuff that I want. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, you know, like, in all honesty, like, I could be making a lot more money than I'm making right now. Like if I got a bit better job and it's not that I can't get a better job. Like I can, you know, I went re recently at a job interview at a staffing company and they were like, they were telling me like, basically you can have any job you want, um, in my field, obviously, because I, because I have so much experience with a varied things. They were just like, basically any job that we have, you can have. And I was like, oh, well, you know, just send me send me updates on stuff you have, and maybe if I find something really interesting, I'll do it. Um, but that's the kind of thing where it's just like I don't have a huge amount of things that I want, so I don't feel like I need a lot of extra money. And like if I were given a huge amount of money, like you know what I what I would do is I would you know I'd quit my job, but like what would I buy? Fuck, I don't know. I guess I'd you know like if you were given a big chunk of money like 77.83 million dollars that's that's a thing but like um what would i it, it's the kind of thing like i don't even know i don't i don't know what i would buy i guess i'd buy a building you, you know like uh buy like a small building in some place fun to live and you know obviously i quit my job but like i'd buy like a, a you know like a five floor apartment building or something with a nice top floor build one, I guess. That would be probably the best in Japan. Um, and that, you know, that wouldn't even be like a small chunk of that money. It would be like a tiny chunk. It would be like maybe a couple million. And like, you know, but that's the kind of thing where like, it would just be 
for convenience sake to like, okay, I'm living in a convenient place now and I've got a nice place. And then I'd be just, you know, I, I feel like if I had that much money, I would be in a situation where I would, you know, first I would, I would definitely not be working, but, um, you know, like when I had all that free time, I would, I would just, you know, fly friends over to Japan, hang out, fly places, you know, bring people on vacations with me, that kind of thing. Like, it would be stupid fun because, like, you know, you, you'd be like, hey, you want to go game hunting in Singapore for some reason? You know, like that kind of thing. And then you're just like, okay, you're, we're, let's go. Um, you know, and then, like, it would 70-something million. Like, that's a lot of money. So, like, you know, I'd be, okay, um, I'll hire all of my friends as my personal assistants. You know, that, that kind of thing where it's just like, okay, I'm going to hire you as my personal assistant. You get like a, a like a hundred grand a year as your, your, uh, payment or something. You just, your job is to hang out and, you know, do things for me. That kind of thing. Like I would do that, but like, I can't think of anything like personally, like big purchases that I really want. Um, I, I just can't, I mean, I get a new computer <laughs> that's, that's about it. Like. I get a new computer. But like, you know, the problem with, um, you know, like, I know a lot of people might say like, I'd get this game or something, or I'd get all these, like a complete collection of this or something. And I might do that. But the thing with it is, is like, if you have so much money and you have the want to buy like a complete collection of something, you could do that really easily. But the thing with it is like the thing with collecting is that you, if you have no goal anymore like you just meet all your goals it's not fun if you were like i'm gonna collect for the snes i'll just buy everything you could do that with that amount of money easily but like then you're just kind of stuck in the situation where like okay well i'm done that's not i mean i have it but what am i going to do with it now it's not a collection anymore it's just like stuff i have it's not there's no building to it there's nothing to find there you know you're just like stuck playing that stuff i mean that's fine but like kind of defeats the purpose of having the complete collection like a collection collection i mean that wasn't your question but i'm just off on a tangent now so let's see next question is where do you see yourself 30 years from now as in life career or games 30 years in 30 years i'll be like nearly 70 i'll probably be dead in 30 years i'd guess um you know i'm not I, i'm not an unhealthy dude but i have like some um some like liver defect that is going to fuck me over eventually so like i'm probably not going to live 30 years um in all honesty like unless like i get there's some like you know great awesome medical things that happen in the future but uh you know really it's it's probably not going to happen so in 30 years i'm probably dead but if i'm not dead i'm hoping i'm not like in a hospital on a dialysis machine or something um, I mean, I guess that's not related to your liver, though. But whatever. Um, uh, yeah, I hope I'm not... I'm, hope, I'm hoping that in 30 years I have a robot body. That's really what I'm aiming for. Let's see. Whoa, whoa is here to asking, uh, do you play the WWE games with 2K17 coming out? I have never played a WWE 2K whatever game, but I'd like to. You know, I see those games and I think that looks like something I would play, but then, you know, they don't sell them in Japan, I don't think. So, like, it's kind of a thing that I have to import, and it's really expensive to import until those games become cheap. So, like, when those games get cheap, the new one is coming out. So it's the kind of thing where you feel like, well, I could get 2K17 in, like, six months, but then the new one's going to be coming out, and then you'll feel like, well, I'm playing the old one. And I guess, like, really it doesn't matter. I mean, because it's not like I'm, it's a yearly thing I'm going to buy anyway. So I guess, like, if I see one about somewhere, like, somebody imported it and traded it in, I'll probably buy it. But, like, you know, or I guess, like, if I can get it for, like, 20 bucks or something, like, I guess I'll get a 2K game. 2K WWE game. But I've never played one. But I'd like to. So let's see. Um, next. Lazy guy spelled in a strange way is saying what's your fondest gaming memories or anything dealing with entertainment you like that's a that's a hard question to uh, answer succinctly not that i answer anything succinctly but 
man. Um, you know, I'm going to go, I'm just going to be general here because I don't have any, I don't want to go into any specific ones because it's harder to think of specific ones, but like there's something, I have a really good memory of, there was a time where I had in like 1984 maybe or so where I had a bunch of money from my birthday or something and I, there was an arcade like right by my house, like couple minutes walking from my house uh it was like in this kind of strip mall shopping center and the place was called fun stuff and it was of course a 1980s arcade so it was dark and dingy and smoky and there was you know unsavory folks hanging about but i'm this little kid and i had like birthday money and i was like i'm fucking going to the arcade screw you guys i'm going there so like what i did was i took my birthday money and i went to this the, the shop next to this arcade was called Card Gallery, and it was like a, you know, like a stationery store, but also sold, like, all types of weird kind of candies and stickers and, like, um, novelty goods and things like that. It was just this weird shop. Um, and you, so I went in there and I bought a bunch of, like, Mad Libs and candy and, like, fucking scratch and sniff stickers that were popular then and, like, garbage pail kids and shit and then i was like oh well i gotta go to the arcade now so i went to the arcade and i spent like an entire day in the arcade and this isn't a lot of money this is like off of like twenty dollars or something but you know it's twenty dollars in 1984 so it's a lot more money um comparatively so i spent a, hours and hours at the arcade playing things like rampage and gauntlet and star wars uh, arcade and um I remember things like Donkey Kong 3 was there. Maybe not Donkey Kong 3 at that time. It might have been. I don't remember. Um, but I know it was there eventually, Donkey Kong 3. But maybe not at the time I'm thinking of. But Gauntlet had just shown up there, I believe. I'm going to look up. I remember going there a time when um, Gauntlet had just shown up. It was like a new game um, at that time. So maybe I'm getting the year wrong. Okay, it's 1985, not 1984. But I remember it definitely because... Okay, this makes sense. This makes a lot of sense. I'm looking at the uh, page for Gauntlet, and the arcade game by Gauntlet came out in October of 1985. So this must have been, like... It must have just came out when Gauntlet was there because my birthday is at the end of October. And after I had birthday money, it went to the arcade. So... It must have been like November 1985 that I first played Gauntlet because it was new and there was like, you know, four player Gauntlet machine at this arcade and like you show up and there's like one spot open. You're just like, yes, I'm going to be this thief because that's the only spot open. And uh, the uh, you have it was like the greatest thing because like I had a ton of quarters, you know, I had like two rolls of quarters or something and um three older kids who were you know looking uh with their long mullets or whatever whatever it was cool in the 80s you know um <laughs> jean jackets and mullets and they're playing this game and i hopped in and i'm helping out it's great it felt good like the older kids were impressed with my gaming skill as a little kid playing gauntlet and uh it was fun like uh i just enjoyed enjoyed that day was I remember that whole day because I played Dragon's Lair a bunch, um, you know, and, I, and Moon Patrol. I remember Moon Patrol too, playing that a ton. Um, matter of fact, I'm gonna look when Donkey Kong Three came out because it might have been um, Donkey Kong Three in the arcade. Okay, that was definitely there then, because it came out in 1983, so that was definitely there. I remember playing that a bunch too. And, and that's like the weird odd one that nobody likes, the one with the with the bees and like spraying Donkey Kong with the, uh, you know, like the spray to make him climb up. That's a, uh, that's a weird, uh, weird game, but it's still a good game. I think out of all the Donkey Kong games, Donkey Kong 3 is my favorite. That's a, uh, that's a, that's a hot take almost nobody has, I bet. Mm-hmm. So, okay, next, uh, Lawrence Evans is asking me, are you interested in, in, or planning on playing Dungeon Travelers 2? If, if, 
or if not, why? Um, I have Dungeon Travelers 2 on my Vita, but I haven't played it yet. I just haven't had the time. And, like, I haven't had the, you know, like, real want to sit down and play another first-person dungeon crawler recently. So, like, I just have been... I've been more on a strategy game kick, so I've been playing, like, um, strategy games mostly recently. So I haven't been playing any first-person dungeon crawlers. So Dungeon Travelers 2 is, like, a game I'll get to eventually, but I just haven't gotten to yet. That's about it. So I'm going to play it eventually. Um... You know what? I'm wondering if I've answered these questions before because um, I'm looking at them and they look really familiar to me. Like, familiar like I've answered them before. So now I'm going to actually look at the Q&A and see if I've answered these. <laughs> I'm, I'm, we're, we're, we're doing this live. We're doing this live, people. Because I'm not sure if I've answered these questions now. And it, it, it's going to be weird to get a double double video where I have the same questions answered twice in a row, right? You guys don't want to see that. Q&A. You know, I have a feeling that I've answered some of these questions before and then lost the video, which is why I didn't, uh... But let's see what my, some of these questions are towards the middle here. Um... So there's me in the last video. Hey, I'm wearing the same sweatshirt. Let's see. So poorly made, but it was good because, like, um, buy those actually. I should review a review of those secret special review in this Q and A. If you let's see, trying to. Okay, so I'm talking about Rumblefish here, which was I know the question that was asked for Rumblefish. So I'm gonna see if there is any question like that. I if I can find that question. Um, let's see. Wow, man. So, okay. Um, you know, I feel like I've answered a lot of these. Jeez, man. Wow, um, I guess you guys will tell me if I've answered these, right? I mean, I feel like I've answered. I know I've read these. See, that's the problem. Like, I've read these before, so it's hard to uh, look at them and think like, man, I've totally uh, answered these. But maybe I've just answered them in my head previously. From, from, um, you know, whatever. But I think, okay, I, I, feel, I have a real feeling that I've answered this question before, though. I'm going to continue on listening to this. Because, like, I... Did I... I ranked Persona games before in this, right? Okay, I'm... I'm still listening. Sorry, this is going to be a weird... This is meta. Hey, wait. That's... A, that's... I'm going to see what the last question is so I can see if it's... It's like a time warp to 1990s Tokyo. It's, it's kind of weird to go into... Okay, okay. wait. Okay, okay. I haven't answered these, but I think I've answered them once before in a video that um, I never uploaded or like it got cut off or something because I have, I really feel like I've answered this question before, but whatever, we're going to go into it. M.G. Smich or Smich or however he is pronouncing Smish. I don't know. Could be any of those. Um, is asking, I know you're not a big fan of ranking things, but I'm going to ask you to rank some stuff anyway. All right. It's not going to be good, though. You're going to be sad you asked me to write to rank these things, whatever it is. Um, I know the first question is ranking Persona. Um, I swear I've answered this, though. Okay, you finished Persona 5, so I'm curious how you'd rank the Persona games 1 to 5. Persona 2 is obviously your number 1. Persona 2 is my number 1. Um, but i like to know where the others fall after that. Um, also, no Persona 5 spoilers. Okay, so in Persona 5, there's Personas. Spoiled. Done. 
No, but um, in Persona, Persona series, like, you know, as far as, like, the games that I like, I like all the Persona games a lot. Let's get that through, because, like, one of these games is going to be the last game, and you're going to think, is that one not so good? No, it's good. But I'm going to say, okay, my number one game is Persona 2, obviously. I like, I just like the story and the characters and um, the setting for that more than any of the other games. Uh, the number two game, though, is going to be Dark Horse coming through is going to be Persona 5. I think I enjoyed that one probably the second most. Um, it's got a lot of good stuff. I talked about it in the review, though, so if you're interested, you can listen to the review why I like Persona 5 so much. But um, after that, I'm going to say Persona 3, then Persona 4, and then Persona 1. But, um, you know, I, feel, I, I hate putting Persona 1 at the end because I really like Persona 1. Um, it's a, it's a really good game. But, you know, like, it's I have less connection to it, I think, than Persona 3 or 4. So I wouldn't put, you know, I guess I couldn't put 1 above 4. Because I really liked 4, but it's still, like, I liked it less than 3, and I liked it less than 5, and I like it less than 2. So I guess, like, that's kind of how it goes. So... Okay, let's see. Along those lines, what would the Persona team need to do to top Persona 2 in your mind? You mentioned featuring an adult-oriented cast, but what else could they do? It seems like Alice blew their load with P5, so it'll be interesting to see how the series is handled after Persona 5. Okay, I think, like, to make a, a game better than 2, I mean, you could do it with the, same, the new way that Persona is made. You could do it. It would be easy, I think. Um, it's just, you have to... You have to go away from the direction that Persona has gone. So, even though Persona 5 brings it a reels it back in from what Persona 4 was with its like cringy anime stereotypes and stuff like that, it became and like originally Persona 4 was pretty good, but like still kind of Scooby Doo. But um, you know, if they took that element out and made it more like you know Persona, okay, like. Persona 4 has, this is like an example to, to understand like the huge difference here. Persona 4 has like these kind of, this kind of like, you know, school kid mystery kind of feel to it. Persona 2 has this thing where like, you know, there's like a serial killer and fucking Hitler and, <laughs> you know, that kind of shit where it's just like the, I mean, Persona 4 has a serial killer kind of. But it's not in the same way. It's not the same kind of thing where, like, um, the serial killer is, like, a rampant serial killer. And he's, like, this crazed, bloodthirsty maniac. And he's, you know, you interact with him in the story in a way that's, like, you know he's a serial killer. And he's doing shit to fuck with you. Um, and then, you know, there's real changes in those characters in that story between the first game and the second game. And I think, like, Persona 2 takes, like, it doesn't pull any punches in just, like, fucking destroying the character from the first game. <laughs> like, he is a, he's like a shell of the person he was in the first game. When he's, and he's not even your main, he's not your main character in the second game. You have Maya as your main character in the second half. But, like, it's so cool that he's there because he is, like, a mess. I mean, he's not the, like, same dude. He's totally changed because, like, he lived through the first part and he remembers what happened to everybody and why they're redoing it. It's, he, he just, he's, like, irrevocably changed. And I think, like, there's nothing equivalent to that in, like, Persona 4 or something like that where, you know, in, and, like, Persona 3 does a better job in that, like, you know, spoiler for Persona 3 if you haven't finished it, but, like, the end character dies. Like, he gets... He has to sacrifice himself to, you know, win. So it's the kind of thing where, um... Uh, you know, there's nothing really like that in Persona 4. It, and, like, all the, you know, afterwards spin-off stuff just made it less... less good in my eyes. Like, 
I probably would have ranked Persona 4 higher than Persona 3 until, like, I played all the Persona 4 spin-off stuff, and I just think, like, it just took so much away from those characters and, like, their motivations and everything with all the after stuff. And, man, that is not... It kind of ruined a bit of that game for me. And I feel like what they could do to make a, you know, Persona 6 would, I mean, adult cast is a, straight up do that. You know, like, there's so many things you could do with an adult cast that would be exactly the same, you know, as the as the kids um, cast, like having the high school class, because, like, you just give them a company and put them all in the same company. You know, you have to do all the same kind of shit then. Like, they have to be there on time. Okay. They have to, you know, they'll have a break in the middle of the day for their lunch, just like at school. Um... They'll have, you know, meetings, and this is, and like, it can be very Japan, so like, they can have like, company excursions, where everybody has to go off to on like, vacations with the company. That happens in, with uh, some, some companies, and like, they'll have things where like, you know, some, some nights you're busy, because you have, you have to do uh, overtime or something, or like, sometimes you have, you know, like, you have a busy period at work, so like, you know, like, when they do the tests in the school in Persona 4, or I guess 5 or 3 also, like, you have those weeks where you can't do anything because you're just studying for the test. Like, you can, they can have things like that at the work, at the workplace where, like, oh, my God, we got this big project we have to finish, so, like, we can't go out because, you know, we got to do this stuff at work and we're here all day. That kind of stuff. Like, it's, it's very easy to switch that template over to an adult situation. But then, like by giving making them adults like you can you can really make the the themes of it like so much darker so much more like impactful because there's only so many things like there's only so many things that like a younger cast like topics that a younger cast can handle you're not going to handle any of these like um any like very serious topics and you could I mean, there are, not to say that there's no serious topics broached, that's, that would be um, a disservice to Persona, especially Five, but, um, you know, it's, it's better, it's more relatable if there's uh, things that are like stuff that people can uh, really relate to in ways that are different from just like remembering this thing from school or like being part of this thing at a school. Um, all of that's, you know, like, I guess everybody has to go to school, but like, you know, everybody graduates and gets on with their life, too. And I wish Persona would do that. So, you know. Okay, next, uh, completely unrelated question. How do you feel about the Metal Gear Solid series? I like Metal Gear Solid in theory, but not in practice. So, like, actually, I only played Metal Gear Solid 1. And I like that game. And I've played it multiple times. But I've never played any of the other ones past that. Like, I just can't... Um, can't get into those to like can't i started playing two and i was just like i'm not into this and i'm i'm not going to continue playing and i have four but i haven't even put it in my ps3 um to that kind of thing where i just feel like i guess i could go maybe go back and play three but i just don't have any motivation to play metal gear it's like too convoluted now and i'm probably not ever gonna play those even though i liked one so next we've got MNN Europe is asking, do you like those muffins made out of corn or what? Um, I do like those muffins made out of corn. It's actually um, really hard to get a corn muffin in Japan because, you know, it's like kind of like an American type of Southern American food. It's not exactly the uh, most common thing you'd find in Japan. So like, I've, I don't think I've ever seen one at a store or in a restaurant or something. But uh, I've made them before at home, so, you know, they're good. I would like, I'd like more corn muffins, um, or cornbread, too. That's good, too. But they're essentially the same thing. Um, let's see. Matthew, M-T-H-W, Matthew, is asking me, uh, when you're ill, do you wear a facial mask that seems to be common in Japan? Do they work? Um, I don't because, um, I hate, I hate to have, like, my breath condensing on my face. <laughs> like, I hate wearing a mask. It's awful. Um, and I guess it works 
in some ways like it could work for some things but like a lot of the times i feel it's just for like the convenience of not having to like constantly wipe your nose or something you know it's just like <laughs> you know like you've got snot but like it's covered with a mask no one can see it stuff like that i don't really know but like um i guess people people uh live by the mask they like the mask but i cannot wear those things can't have things around my ears and like over my face like it it's not for me um let's see next question how long is your working week as a translator and is your day the norm for japanese workers my i don't have a normal schedule i do have a normal schedule but i don't have a normal work week so i work four days a week and i work like monday tuesday thursday friday um and I, I work an eight-hour day, but I work from 7 a.m. till 4 p.m. Um, and my commute time is like 35 minutes, maybe. It's not that long. Um, it's not exactly normal, though. I mean, I moved specifically to be closer to my work so that I could, you know, not have to have a long commute. Um, and I... I work at a company that has flex time, so like I can I could potentially go into work at 10, 10 a.m. and leave at 6 p.m. or whatever, six or seven or whatever it is. I don't know, but like I choose to go in as early as I can, which is actually seven is as early as I can get there. So I get there at seven and I leave at four because I want to get out of there as fast as I can. And like getting up at nine to go to work and getting up at six to go to work, like it's the same level of tired for me. I'm not a morning person at all, so like. If I get up at 9 to go to work, I'm still going to be sleepy. If I get up at 7 or 6, I'm going to be equally as sleepy. So, like, I just figure, well, I might as well get out at 6 and have some stuff, some free time during the evening. So, that's what I do. Um, everybody else in my company could do that, too, but nobody nobody does that. I'm There's, like, three other people there at 7. Everyone else comes at, like, 9.30 or 10. Let's see, um... Let's see, I see, oh, damn it. I see a lot of YouTube videos showing how easy it is to buy used gaming hardware in Japan, hard off, etc. Is it easy to just to buy parts for these systems? My concern as a collector is now is how handled, handheld systems in particular will age and will go about replacing dead batteries, etc. Do any Japanese stores cater to this? You know, I don't know. I'm sure there are company, there are stores that cater to like parts for games but like i don't know i mean i've never ha i've never looked for it and i'm not like technologically uh good enough to like you know replace lasers and shit for games and i think like most of the time that stuff exists but it's just like you're gonna have to buy those parts from like an online seller and that's kind of how it was before like i modded my um game boy advance back in the day with a with a you know like a backlit screen and maybe front lit screen i don't know whatever but uh, it's a screen that i put on my in my game boy advance before there was a backlight on the the sp before the sp came out and uh you know i had to order all the parts from a from maybe lick sang or something as a website that was really popular for a while but they got like uh in a bunch of trouble from nintendo for hacking like Maybe it wasn't Nintendo. Maybe it was Sony that got them um, initially shut down because of all of the uh, chips for PS One and PS Two. I don't remember, but there was a there was a big thing with that. But I'm sure there's just online stuff. You can get that stuff online probably anywhere. Let's see. Next question: Have you ever been tempted or had the opportunity to work at a video game company in Japan? Um, I've never had the opportunity to work at a company oh wait that's not true i was an initially i got hired to work as a translator for the development process of psycho break which is the evil within and that's at with tango but um what happened was the position that i got that they were gonna have me do they decided like oh we're gonna do it a different way and we don't have this position anymore so i didn't end up doing it but like i w almost did that and that would have been kind of a mistake actually because i i mean after that project ended i probably would have lost my job and that would have sucked so and you know i've worked as in doing freelance work for game companies 
Um, but I've never, you know, I don't know what I would do. I don't know, like, a game company that has its own, like, in-house translators in Japan. Um, I'm sure they they exist, but I don't know where. I don't know who. And I've never seen any job openings for that. But I'd take them if there was one. <laughs> uh, it would be good. You know, if, like, Capcom were hiring or something, I'd be into that. But, uh, whatever. Let's see. Do you expect to remain a translator for your entire career, or do you have something else you'd like to do while in Japan? I don't know. Um, I don't mind being a translator. It kind of fits my personality well, because, like, I can just sit around and think about stuff. It's the kind of thing where I just get to, most of the time, people will leave me alone. Um, I don't want a job where I have to worry about talking to people or dealing with a lot of people all the time. I just want to, like, someone who will give me something and be like, go to work, get it done by this time, and I never hear from them again until the time where when the item is due. Like, that's the that's how I work best. I just, I don't want to work with other people. I don't want to deal with other people. I don't even want to see other people, if optional. If, good, if I could work from home, I would totally do that. Um, so translation works well for me. Um, let's see. Next, uh, you said you'd buy the majority of your new games from Amazon. Do you also trade in games for cash store credit? In the UK, the prices for going, for doing so are quite poor. Is it the same in Japan? Um, I've never traded in a game for, like a new game for cash or store credit. Never traded in a game to a store in my life. Um, not even back in the day. So like when I was a kid... You know, you could trade in games like Funko Land or something. Um, I never did that. Never once. Um, so, which is why I have a U.S. collection. Like a collection of all my stuff. All the games I've ever had in my life, I still have. Um, except for games that I've given to people. Or, and I mean, I've sold some games from my collection that I didn't want anymore to peep other people on YouTube. But I've traded stuff too. But I've never sold a game back to a store. So there's that i you know I, I don't know i don't know how the trading values are but i assume they're probably not so good so next question your friends in japan are they actually japanese other people who have moved there from the u.s or europe or a mix um i ask because you don't have the language barrier many visitors to japan do so i wondered if that makes it a lot easier to have a social life there um, most of my friends are japanese um, I have a few friends. I play like a Pathfinder on the weekends, and all those people are, uh, well, one of them is Japanese, but the rest are like various English speakers. So like there's like a Canadian dude and two Americans and a French guy, and we play Pathfinder. So those are like my, that's my, that's my uh, foreign friends for the most part. I mean, I have a few other, I have like some Swedish friends too. Um, but they don't play Pathfinder. They just... I have a Swedish friend who lives at the same station as I do. Um, so every once in a while I'll see her and her boyfriend or whatever. Because they live nearby. But, uh... You know, and then I have, like, people I know from clubs. But for the most part, it's Japanese people. Because it's... You know, the country is majority Japanese people. And I don't, like, stay in a kind of foreigner bubble that some people tend to stay in when they can only speak English. So, let's see. Are Japanese gamers embracing digital downloads instead of physical releases, or do they complain about it and the amount of DLC and patching that now happens for each game? Um, they always complain about it. I think Japan is, like, really anti-digital downloading for stuff. Like, to the point where Japan, like, recently... Like, this isn't game-related, but for, for music, like, CD sales in Japan are going up. Whereas, like, digital sales of music were going down. It's, like, the only country in the world where that's true. Uh, Japan, Japanese people don't like non-physical stuff for some reason. So, like, I assume that applies to games as well. But, you know, I think some people are fine with getting digital stuff. Because recently, you know, even though Final Fantasy XV didn't, like, break any Final Fantasy sales record, records in Japan, it did, uh... It might have broke a sales record for most amount of digital games, but in uh you know at the same time or whatever at, for a game or something it might have done that so like i think people are more open to it now but it's probably still much less popular here than it is outside of japan which is why like you'll find that some when games get um a big dlc release they usually get a physical release also in japan whereas like most of the time in the u.s they will not 
So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Next. Which retro games would you love to see have a brand new entry on modern hardware, but for some reason have never or or never have? For example, one of mine is Klonoa. Um, I recently watched Pete Dore play through Klonoa. Maybe Klonoa 2. Um, but totally unrelated to your question. <laughs> anyway, the... Uh, um, for me, I'd like to see a new Bonk's Adventure game. That would be great. Um, I, I mean, this one isn't really retro, but it's, there hasn't been a new entry in the series for a long time. Uh, Famicom Wars, or I guess Advance Wars. I'd like to see another one of those. Hopefully they make one on the Switch. That would be cool. Um, I'd be down for more Advance Wars. Um, I mean, we've, we went through the entire 3DS generation with no Advance Wars games. That's sad. So we need more of those. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's it, but, wow, geez, got a lot of, a lot of questions here, I don't know, okay, I think I can answer this next set of questions in the, the remaining time we've got, they're not, they don't look like they're that long. So Sega Scream is asking, let's say that for some reason you had to leave Japan and return to America for a good amount of time, um... It was of such dire importance that you had to quit your job in the process. You're gone for two to three years to take care of whatever the serious business is. Would you run here? That's the setup for the questions. Now, question one is, would you want to return to live in Japan? Probably. I mean, go. I went back to the to the U.S. recently and I thought like after like a couple weeks, I was already thinking like, man, I kind of want to just go back to Japan, e even though like I liked seeing the people I know there but like there's something really um stifling to me about living in the U.S. which is, sounds weird but like it, prob probably it's just the area that I was I live in which is kind of central Connecticut but you know maybe if you know I were in New York or something it would be a little bit easier to live for me but man yeah, it seems unlikely it'd be too expensive. <laughs> that seems more likely. But what I'm thinking is that, like, you know, once I, even if I were gone for two or three years, I'd still think, like, man, Tokyo is so easy to live in that it's just a great place to live. You don't ever, you'd never have to worry about anything when you're in Tokyo. It's, you can't, you can't really get lost. You can't really, uh, you know, it's, there's like such a low crime rate that you never worry about crime. It's great. Um, it's clean. There's all types of benefits to living here. So, like, if I were gone, I would probably miss it. Uh, let's see. Next is, what do you think you would be looking forward to the most upon returning to Japan afterwards? Places, food, friends, atmosphere, probably all of that, really. Um, may, mostly, it would just be the convenience of having, like, so many different types of, like, city areas all within, like, a short train distance. So, like, you know, there's a very different kind of feel to a place like, Shibuya than there is to Akihabara or a place like Ginza or a place like Ikebukuro. If you go to those places, they all have a different kind of city feel, but they're all within like a short train ride of each other. So it's like a totally different city within, you know, just a short train ride distance. It's great. Um, if you've ever listen, um, read the Mosaic comic, the uh, Green Lantern Mosaic, it's kind of like the Mosaic world. Tokyo is like the Mosaic world. It's got like you know, you go over a small part and suddenly you're in a different planet. It's great. Um, let's see. What things do you think you would enjoy about staying in America while you were here? Um, I think all the things that I enjoy about America when I was there recently, well, I mean last year, were, you know, there's so much good food. and I, There's lots of good food in Tokyo, but don't get me wrong. But, like, the kinds of stuff that I, you know, I'm, a, I'm an American, so, like, I eat American food. Um... But, like, it was so, you know, it's good to be able to, like, go to the gas station and get fucking pecan twirls. And and that's, like, old people food, but it's totally something I really enjoy, those pecan twirls. I don't know if anybody knows what those are. Um, but, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, like, food is a, is a good thing. But also, like, seeing friends and having, like, just random drives around to a couple, like neighboring states and seeing like interesting people and doing like stuff in English is kind of fun sometimes <laughs> uh that kind of stuff is all right so I feel like um you know 
that's kind of good. So I would miss that. I would enjoy that while I was there. That's for sure. So let's see. Um, so let's see. Number four. Do you think Vampire Mike should stop moonlighting as a Mike Ness impersonator despite hating the band Social Distortion? I, I would agree. He should. He, uh, that Vampire Mike, um, he's, he's the guy. <laughs> that's something he is. Um, let's see. That's, that's the end. I think I'm over an hour now, so we are going to stop here. And I hope I haven't answered all these questions before. This is like a repeat. And I have a feel like I honestly, like halfway through this, I have a feeling that I answered like some of these already. Um, but I, I might have actually answered them and lost the video or not, not, you know, uploaded the video. That's possible. That's, that's the thing that I do often make videos and then never, never upload them. So yeah, that'll be it. So I guess we've got just a few more questions left. So if you guys got more questions, ask away, but if you don't, you know what's next, the final Q&A video. So, yep, see you guys next time.